We did go over an in interval notation a little bit last time, and we're going to be using it a little bit in four, chapter 4. So the open interval, now these are supposed to be connected between these, you guys. So something like that. Uh, if they're open, then we use parentheses like this. And by the way, we're not graphing with circles anymore like you see there. We're going to be graphing with the brackets that we use in the interval. So this would be looking something like this. This one would look something like this. So we got closed intervals, half open intervals, and open intervals. Yes. When solving inequalities, adding and subtracting both sides of the inequality does not change. Oh, yeah. So this is something you guys have to remember from the previous class. <coughs> If we ever multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative, ever, then we need to flip the sign. Okay? Also, here at the bottom we have equivalent expressions. It doesn't matter if you write x is greater than 7 or 7 is less than x. They mean exactly the same thing. All right. Uh, right here. All right. On this one, I notice for these two, they don't have the equal sign under them. So they would be open circles before, but now we're going to use those parentheses like this. If they do have the equal sign underneath them like this, then we're going to use square brackets like these. Um, in previous classes, you may have had teachers tell you that if x is less than 7, then the inequality tells you which way the line goes. The problem is, that only works if x is on the left, which is okay as long as you do that all the time. But sometimes you may not want to because, well, like me, I'm fat and lazy. So if I see something like this, I just ask myself, self, does the inequality eat the x? If it eats the x, then it goes to the right. If it doesn't eat the x, then it goes to the left. Bam. Maybe that's a harder rule, I don't know. And then... Ignore this garbage. All right, so let's solve this one, and then we'll graph it. So again, we're just we're treating this exactly like we would as though it were an equation. The only thing we're worried about is if we ever divide by a negative or multiply both sides by a negative. So right here, I would subtract 8 from both sides. And I got a 3x is greater than, I should put the line there, uh, 18. And then divide both sides by 3, and I get x is greater than 6. So on my number line, I've got 5, 6, and 7. They should give these to you on the homework. So at 6, I have x is greater than 6, which means before I would have used an open circle, but that's in the past now. Uh, this one... I guess we need to know which way it's going first. This one's eating the x, so it's going to go to the right. And since it doesn't have an equal sign, it's, the 6 is not included as part of the solution set. So we use the curve parentheses bracket thing like this. Uh, they may want the interval for this, so it starts at 6 and goes all the way to the right as far as you can go. So this is a really good question. So if I put 6 in for the x right here, it would tell me where the two uh, expressions are equal. But if we look at this original inequality, it doesn't have the line underneath. So we're not worried about when it's equal. It, it can't actually equal each other for, for it to be a true statement. 
Let me rephrase that. If, they're, if it's equal, then it's false. That seems better. Let's do that. So, for example, if I do 3 times 6 plus 8, the statement is that this has to be greater than 26, right? Well, this would give me 18 plus 8 is greater than 26. And so I get 26 is greater than 26. This right here is a false statement. And that's the, the curved bracket for some reason. Someone decided a long time ago, probably in ancient Greece, that we needed curved brackets right there. And so now, and this is the 21st century, right? Now you get to as well. Uh, the curved bracket just, just indicates that 6 is not part of the solution set. It would give us a false statement. But that's where it all begins.